When you first launch GIMP, it should look something like this. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come here to Windows and I'm going to select Single Window Mode. And then I'm going to maximize this by clicking here. Now what we're now looking at is the Single Window Mode layout. And in fact, this is the default layout. I'm now going to come over here to File and I'm going to click on to New. And I will get this dialog box here. And it's asking me, would I like to create a new image? And I'm just going to say OK to that. The user interface now looks as follows. And in the centre, we can see we have an image which has just got a white background in this particular case. Over here, we can see we have the toolbox. And if we look down here, we can see that we have the tool options. Now, these are the options for the currently selected tool, which in this case is the zoom tool. If I now come here and click on the brush tool, we can see that the tool options have indeed changed and these now reflect the options for the brush tool or the paint brush tool I should say. If I come over here and click on the text tool which is this one, if we now have a look down here we can see that the tool options have actually changed. Tools can also be selected from the menu. Come to the tools menu item here I can go to Selection Tools, and you can see that there is a Rectangle Select, Ellipse Select, all the way down to Intelligent Scissors Select. If we have a look at the Rectangle Select, we can see that there's an R next to it. Now that means it's possible to select this tool via the keyboard by pressing the R key. If I come down here to the Paint Tools, we can see we have a Bucket Fill, all the way down to the Dodge and burn. And here for the bucket fill, if you hold the shift and the B key down, then in fact what you can get is the bucket tool. The blend tool can be gained access to by pressing L on the keyboard. And all of these are the shortcuts for all of the tools. Some you can see don't have a shortcut such as this one here. At the moment you can see we have the rectangular select tool which allows me to draw rectangles like this. If I now press F, I get the free select tool, so that was a shortcut. If I now go to tools here and go to selection tools, I can get the ellipse select and I can simply select an area of the screen using that. To go back to the rectangular tool, I can select this one here and I can do it there. And just to remind you again, F on the keyboard for example is the free select. Over here we can see we have some tabs. This tab is currently selected and this is the layers. The layers panel shows us how many layers the current image has and in this particular case at the moment this image only has the one layer and that is the background layer. Now a later video will discuss what we can do with layers. The other tab which is this one here which I'll now click on this shows us the red, green and blue components that exist in the current image. This tab here, well that is to do with paths that we will discuss in videos later in this series. And this one here is to do with the history. Now if you have a look there you can see that that's showing the free select that I drew, the rectangle that I drew, the ellipse that I drew. So it's a history of what I've been up to. If we have a look down here, we can see we have more tabs. The first tab, the one I have highlighted, is showing me all of the brush styles that I can have. And if I scroll down, we can see the various brush styles. I have the brush tool already selected. So I'm going to simply show what happens when I brush in the image there. Now I'm going to come down and I'm going to select this brush here. And then I'm going to draw with that one there. Now I'll choose this one and you can see I get differing effects by selecting the various brushes from this particular area here. I'll bring this video to an end now. I'll not discuss the remaining tabs or the rest of the menu items. We'll discuss these as and when it's necessary when we're using the various aspects of GIMP. What we've had a look at here, however, is the basic layout of GIMP. We've looked at the tools, the options they can have, and we've looked at the various ways in which we can select individual tools, either by the toolbox, the pull-down menus, or indeed the shortcuts 
notes on the keyboard. Now I recommend you get familiar with all of those ways of bringing up a tool that you wish to use when you're using GIMP for whatever reason. <laughs>